New Brew Thursday. Woo! And uh, today we are doing 50-50 Eclipse. Total Holy. Eclipse of the Heart. Yeah. Total Eclipse of the Heart. I don't know what this means though. I don't know what that are is. Are you making a sun? I, I think so, yeah. I thought you were voguing. So is this like the moon? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. But uh, yeah, we, got, we tried to find a beer everyone can get this week. So there it is. Yeah. That was yeah. a joke. Run, the, run down to your local you know, gas station, AMP. I think all the AMPMs have this. Yeah. I actually think so. it just got started getting distributed in uh, 7-Eleven, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's right nice. next to the like uh, Natty Ice and the, what's their game day? Is it, it's called game day, it's called isn't game it? called game day. Yeah, their game day beer. Yeah. 7-Eleven's own particular line of beer. So oh, if they don't yeah. have Eclipse, just get game day. It's yeah, it's exactly. Whatever. It's close enough. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> not at all. Um, no, we're doing something rare and fabulous today because this week is our anniversary party. Mm-hmm. Technically, our anniversary is back in November, but we're celebrating our anniversary this week. So we're doing something rare and fabulous because we'll be doing rare and fabulous beers Saturday at the party. It's going to be e- epic. Eclipse just came out in Not December this bottle, though. Too. <laughs> yeah. we'll, well, we might have one <laughs> other Eclipse bottle or two. Or yeah, three, I'm sure Eclipse will make its presence known. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure. It should be noted um, that if you're not familiar with the Eclipse series, um, 50-50 up in uh, Truckee. Truckee, California. Truckee, CA. Um, they have multiple... I love what they do with this beer because they have multiple versions of it you go. where it's the same... Nice. Just tore through it. Um, where they have the same base beer in um, the same one, but if you ever see Eclipse on the Shelf, which happens in a couple of places, you'll see a bunch of them with different wax. And the different waxes um, delineate, is that the right word? Delineate, yeah. Yeah, they are uh, different kinds of spirit barrels. And apparently this is the brewer's Siemens wax color? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, Siemens, Siemens, which is a, no, it's not. Siemens, yeah. Yeah. Siemens is a company that does not sell semen. And they they don't like when you call and ask that. <laughs> you, it doesn't sound like you have personal experience with this at all. <laughs> they uh, just well, like roll their eyes over the phone, and that you can sense that they're rolling their eyes. Yeah, exactly. There, you go. I'm sorry. There's got to be a button that they push that leads you to like a pre-recorded message, like <laughs> you are stupid for asking this question. Uh, cheers, so cheers to 50/50. Cheers to 50/50. Um, this one. Uh, which one was this again, John? This is the Bernheim. I think they say call it wheat Bernheim barrel. Wheat. Yeah, Bernheim, uh, which a, is a wheat whiskey. A wheat whiskey. Yeah. Um, yeah, this, you can, uh, the aroma on these are very powerful and you're going to get all the barrel for what you're doing, um, off it like that purple is what you said, Elijah Craig um, right. barrel. And so any of the aroma that you get off of that whiskey, you're going to get off the spear. Right. And mm-hmm. it's like, and just to kind of on a side note, this is a 2012 and the reason we're doing this one in particular is I got all of the different vintages. Um, cause and, John's badass that way. Well, that's how he rolls. Why not? You know? <laughs> why not? Uh, but when the option to be badass comes up, some people ask why. And honestly, I ask why not? The Elijah Craig one—it's really good. It's got like a hundred on rate beer and like a ninety-nine on beer. Oh, yeah, it's a fabulous beer. Yeah. It's a great beer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this one has like a ninety-two on rate beer, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just not technically crowdsourced as good as well uh, and it's also doesn't elijah have craig. the hype behind the elijah craig right yeah so, and that, that's the thing is like always add a few points for hype just to finish my thought i thought it'd be more interesting to do something that you might not see somewhere else <laughs> yeah exactly I mean. like for for me it would have been this one or like one of the rye whiskey barrels that they did which is really great Rebel yell would have been cool too yeah like but yeah. yeah um but um so much toffee and vanilla on the aroma on this it's just like it smells huge really good toffee. yeah huge, huge it's toffee. like oh it's like, I mean, I don't And I'm a it. huge, I love toffee to death. Like, Heath, Heath bars are my favorite candy bars. Yeah. And, but I can't eat them because they mess with me. So, I mean, this is a nice little... It's a nice hello. It's a nice hello. Like, remember me, I'm toffee, I'm your old friend. I don't get a lot of whiskey, like, dominance on the nose. No, the, the yeah. aroma on it, a lot, lot of the alcohol is off the aroma, but you get some of it on the flavor. Like when you drink it, you're gonna you're gonna get some of that heat and fusel, but they, they they hide it well in the aroma. Yeah, well, and it's kind of funny because you get a lot of you don't get a lot of like whiskey per se, but you do get a lot of the barrel character. I mean, you can almost smell like wood. You oh know? yeah. Oh wow, that's that's good. Yeah, you can taste the wood too. Like that's the first thing that actually hit me was the wood. <laughs> In my mouth. Okay, now you're just you're just baiting me now. Just encouraging. <laughs> you're just um, baiting me. Yeah, mm, um, that is silky. Mm-hmm. Wow. See, just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
It's, it's like silky wood hitting my mouth. It's almost salty. Uh, mm. No, I'm kidding. Uh, the cool thing about this is the, the the kind of whiskey. It's it's pretty unique because. Um, you know, there uh, people are familiar with American whiskey. You know, you have grain whiskey. The big one is bourbon, which is fifty-one percent corn. Um, there's rye whiskey, which is at least fifty-one percent rye. Um, there are a couple of other things, but this one is wheat whiskey. Which um, I, did, did we find out exactly what percentage wheat it? Not was? percentage, but the primary grain bill is uh, winter wheat. Yeah. So, so, which is cool because you have certain bourbons, and they'll hit that fifty-one percent mark. But then they'll make up the rest of it with another kind of grain like rye or wheat. Right. And the nice like thing about like, wheat is that it, it affects the mouthfeel. It affects the like, it the soften yeah. the softening of it. Um, it's almost like yeah. I don't think I've ever had a wheat whiskey. We yeah. had like a wheat uh, wheat wine, right? The like not a barley wine, but a wheat wine. Well, you're talking about a straight up beer. I'm talking about a whiskey because yeah. whiskey they make a beer and then they distill it to make the whiskey. So. How sort much of, of that yeah. wheat character comes through in the actual spirit? Yeah, it's you know? I, to, to me, it's more like I said, it, it has more of a mouthfeel kind of influence. You think so um, on yeah. the spirit? Well, yeah, it, it yeah definitely. Oh, um, wow. Because I mean, you, you're not just getting the alcohol; you're getting a lot of other compounds along with it right. in the distilling process, depending on how many times you distill it. But um, to me, like that, as far as like flavor goes, I mean, if there's a bourbon that's a really high percentage of rye, then I'll get a lot more of the flavor out of that. But with wheat or whatever other blend they use, if it's a lot of wheat, then it has a definite particular kind of softness to it. Like um, uh, Van Winkle um, is a, a classic, like high wheat percentage bourbon. He's my pappy. That's really great. Oh, Van Winkle is so good. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is good. It would have been nice if we would have thought this through before to actually have like a wheat whiskey to mm -hmm. kind of, you know, Well, compare. I think the only one that's there is the Bernheim. Yeah, that's the. So you'd the, have to get the Bernheim whiskey. Yeah, but oh. still, they're the only ones that make it, and it's the only wheat whiskey available in America. Yeah, uh, the other ones I was America. Talking, the ones I was talking about were just high wheat bourbons. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. But this is oh man, and it's this it's, is it's, definitely a sit it sit out in the backyard by a fire with a cigar beer. Like this is this is what that moment was made for. I think for. you said that last week. I did, but. We're doing, well, it's winter, it's, it's winter time. time. Yeah, it's winter time. It's winter time. Same, same, same kind of style. This, th I think that these kind of bourbon barrel aged beers lend themselves more to a big, huge cigar, even than the Imperial Stouts do. Like the Narwhal last week was great, would be great for that as well. This would really enhance that, that experience because mm. you have all of that added, like the toffee and the vanilla and the wood notes that come off this beer ton of chocolate are going to work too. so well with like a, a nice, big, rich cigar. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, and I honestly, I haven't tried any of the Eclipse that I got. I actually gave half of it away here and there to people. Right. Um, but for this being my first one from 2012, it's excellent. And if this is technically lower on the scale. The lower rated, yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, well. Well, and this is going to get so much better with age, you know. <laughs> well, time will tell, you know. Really, you don't think so? Well, I it, I it it depends because I'm always kind of leery on or weary of aging barrel aged beers because that I mean whenever you age any kind of beer, you know, it tastes like it does fresh and then it'll go through a kind of awkward period for a while mm -hmm. until the, that more like aged character starts to come out and the flavors really blend a lot because with barrel aged beers the first thing that falls off is the barrel you know, that's the first thing to go away. And so that awkward phase lasts a lot longer. I don't longer, know if I agree with that. I, I think, think the first thing that drops off for me is the fusel qualities that you get off of a bourbon barrel age. I think the oak and the vanilla and all of those like added flavor components that you're getting on the beer are gonna hold true to it, but it war it like softens up, the, the fusel notes die off a little bit, mm. it mellows out a bit. And to me, like when you age one of these barrel aged beers out for a year or two, and I agree, like six months, eight months into it, it, it does go through that weird, like, okay, there's there's something off on here. Yeah. Um, you know, so I always wait at least a year, try it out, maybe two years. Um, but I start to get that nice mellow flavor where all of the oak, all of the vanilla, all the, the, the those kind of flavors that you're getting off of the bourbon characteristic are really prominent and just kind of wow, in a nice really? mellow 
uh, feel to it. Yeah, you know, I, uh, that's been my experience. I mean, maybe yeah, you just don't know how to age beer. Shut up. Um, <laughs> I, I, in, in putting it a bit more uh, nicely, um, I, was, <laughs> I was going to say that um, it's a very um, objective experience. Objective, subjective. Which one? Subjective. Subjective. Where where it's it depends on storage conditions a lot. I mean, on, honestly, of my cellar, the storage conditions aren't really perfect. They're not bad. But Isn't it like a U-Haul storage unit somewhere out in like Riverside? Down in Ohio. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> Average temperature at ninety-eight degrees. Oh, it's only like <laughs> well, it's only like high eighties. Uh, no, that's not true. But um, like I've had I've had some barrel aged beers that I've hung on to for a while that I was like, eh, I'm getting a lot of like stringent like you know roasted character and you know tannin from the oak and that's kind of it, you know. And again, it might just be from the way that I store them, I don't know. But like I said, I haven't had a lot of good experiences aging barrel aged beers That's weird, because to me, well, bourbon barrel aged beers are what aging is for, see, I, to and, a degree. And my, my thing is, like, I always prefer to age, um, like, straight up beers. Like, my favorite beer to age, pretty much, period, well, it of um, non-sour beers is... Plenty of the other. Um, absolutely. Man, three-year-old plenty? Mm-mm-mm. Um, That's delicious. In I your just mouth. offended everyone. <laughs> no, um, um, Imperial Russian Stout from Stone. So you would agree that this is something you probably could sell her, um, right? Yes, um, if if the conditions were right. Like I said, I mean, if if it were me, if I my cellar was you know a seventy five degree closet, nah, I wouldn't. I would drink it right away um, because I don't think that the flavors would hold up. As well, okay. Um, but if you have like, I mean, Bill Seller or something like that, or Vern's, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Because then, if, if with with much much better conditions, it would be more of a progression well, that even, you would be able even to. Bill Seller is. I think it's more of a mid sixties seller. Yeah, because he doesn't refrigerate um, them. Ref, that that refrigerator that he has isn't refrigerated. It's just. Well, but still, you know. the, the conditions are better than you know putting it in the closet. You know. In well, your we've shed, also learned at least know. at the vertical epic thing that Stone did for twelve, 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 and. Mm -hmm. Everything else, um, we did the <clears throat> the tasting they did in the pea gravel lounge with Greg and people that brought differently stored versions of um, the vertical epic beers. And to be honest with you, the ones that you could really tell a difference with were the ones that were under the worst conditions. Yeah, like I think there was an eBay beer that someone bought an O3. <clears throat> and he spent three hundred dollars on who knows. I, and I don't, I don't know if that was the one. I thought I think there was an eBay beer involved that was the worst, and it was just like wow. And when you compare them side by side, you can tell the difference. But that's that's the thing. You have to be able to compare it side by side with mm -hmm. and Sto like Stone brought beers out too that were just in the refrigerator for twelve years. Yeah, or right. whatever. Yeah, or eleven years. Well, and, um, and refrigerating isn't aging. It's preserving. preserving it. I know that, yeah, but that so. was the that was like to the control. Extent, you yeah. know. Right. So right. they said, well, this we know this has been cold for this long. And, you know, um, but tasting them side by side, if I wouldn't have tasted it side by side, maybe I wouldn't have been able to pick up as much offness as mm -hmm. I did. Um, but that's, I, when I buy these, I buy two of yeah. each. You can buy up to like six, some you can buy a case of. Right. And if you're buying a case of Eclipse, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> that's your deal. But um, no, I, just know, for me, I'm, you know, and even though I didn't drink one, and then save one. That was my intent. Right. But I get really generous. And I think I have here, an Elijah Craig from yeah. last year. Oh, by, by, by the way. So do I. Thank you. What? I think I have an Elijah Craig from last year. Oh, do you? Yeah. Not on me right now, but I mean. Oh, I thought you were going to be like, bam. No, but I think you and I need to sit down and have this out. That was cause a weird. I, can pull, I, I can't, I can't be there. Right I was going to say, hello. <laughs> well, what the hell? Obvi, hello. Sorry, John and I should sit down with you and school you on how to, on how aging beer works. All right, all right, yeah, <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's, it's a, a fun experiment, um, but I see what you're saying. It's yeah. definitely not something like you you don't buy a bottle and buy that single bottle and then age that bottle for two years and then drink it. Like that's to definitely. me that's that's a bad idea yeah, just because definitely. you need to drink it fresh. You need to you need to break it drink it as the brewer intended it to taste. And that's fresh. Boom, right yeah. here. And then you take a couple. And if you can, try them once a year, mm -hmm. you know, and what see where they're at. What do you do if you have access to one? If you only have access to one, you drink it, you I, enjoy it, you love it. I drink it fresh. That's that's what yeah. I would do personally, really? yeah. Because I am that guy who's got a lot of single beers that I've had for at least 
six months to a year now. Yeah. That I'm sure they're f- still fine. I mean, I didn't put the, anything the only, in there that didn't belong in there. The only yeah. difference is, is if you can drink that beer somewhere else. I mean, the the key for me is that you need to taste it fresh so that you know right. if you what have a the bottle, aging yeah, is going to be. And you can go to yeah. a, a bar and try it somewhere to, as you're, like, controlled. And, mm. of course, then, yeah, that's cool. But, yeah, I'm that guy. But, yeah, but if you if you have a beer that you've never drank before and you're like, I'm going to age this for five years, it's like, well... It's gonna Why? taste, yeah. It's gonna yeah. taste different, sure, but you won't know that because you didn't know what it tasted like fresh. Yeah, I mean, so. I'm sorry. Doing something like that is that that's people who do that kind of stuff, like go to bottle shares and then be like, you know, oh, check it out, five year old beer, bam. It's like, hey, what's it gonna be like? I don't know. I have no idea. Never but it's five it years old. That makes me cool at this bottle share. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I think yeah, part of my point as far as the whole aging thing goes is you know if you have perfect conditions, then right on. If you don't, then some styles are going to hold up way better than others. Like I mean, goose like goose holds up. Well, go- yeah, much, goose much better is yeah, and in like you know a higher temperature. And I know it's not quite the same thing, but there are certain styles that will hold up better than um, like something like what that, I was so. actually really surprised with was uh, one that I did was uh, Great Divides Oak Aged IPA. Oh, and well, I aged okay, one of those out. For, weird, like yeah, that. it's a weird. I aged one of those out for like a year or two, and it tasted fantastic. IPA, uh, you yeah, you like you could oak age an IPA, and it could taste awesome. But it's an IPA, and everyone's like, "Well, you got to drink them fresh." Well, yeah, but what do IPAs do when they are not fresh? They turn into barley wine kind of beers, right? So you almost have this hopped, bitter barley wine that's been kind of mellowed out in a barrel yeah. and it turns into something that's not a bar- barrel aged barley wine but it's not an IPA it's a yeah, barrel aged weird in between kind and of you thing. get a lot of cool stuff from that that's IPA yeah. is another beer that I never would have thought you could barrel age and Great Divide's a good example of yeah. I mean they Great I Divide and Epic in New Zealand they, they're Armageddon the barrel, oh yeah, dude, yeah, the barrel yeah, aged exactly Armageddon is, is amazing um, well and it's funny because with with Whenever you barrel age something or you age something in a bottle, everything has to do with oxygen. You know, well, there there are other things that are involved, obviously, but especially with um, aging like IPA and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of the reason that they tell you not to do it is because, for one thing, the hop flavor falls off, but the reactions that oxygen have with those hop oils can get real, real nasty. I mean, oh yeah, real, yeah. Real, real nasty. And so it's interesting when you have a little like. When you have a little bit of that oxidized hop character, but then you have it pairing with those like vanillins that you get from the barrel, and it's it's a really interesting. Did you say kind vanillins? Of, vanillins, yeah. That's an actual. Is that an actual word? That's a compound, yeah. Really? That, I like I t- that word. I totally copped that from uh, Chad Yeagibson. I'm gonna. He's, I want to form like a pop music band called the Vanillins. <laughs> We'll do um, top forty music. <laughs> co- they're co- they'll cover Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> no, we won't. Well, see, I don't see. I want. I want to be in a hip hop group and call us the Vanilla Villains. Uh, yeah, see. jump the shark. Oh. Steve's was fine. Yours. Oh, I do. I, I do run much. things into the ground, don't I? That's a talent that I have. Well, on that note, yeah, um, we are going to uh, this Saturday be at Beachwood Barbecue in Long Beach. Uh, come out around six o'clock if you'd like to get a glass. Uh, we'll be, we will have glasses there. So far, there's um, 125 people on Facebook that said they're going. Yeah, uh, so glasses will go quickly. Uh, we're gonna start handing glasses out at about six o'clock. The bottle share will start at about eight thirty. I feel lucky to have some. Like, yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> God. Um, and uh, so yeah, and we're uh, we've had a lot of people asking like what they should bring and. Uh, we have no special requests. Just bring whatever you'd like to share. Um, your body. Bring your body. It's a dead man's party. Well, bring your body. Yeah, if everyone brings bring a Bring your body and bring a safe way home, please. Yeah. yeah, and if everyone brings a bottle, like, that's that's just an insane amount of beer that we're going <laughs> to... Plus the beer that Beachwood has, like... Yeah, because, I mean, I know I'm bringing about 48 bottles that I've 48? set aside already. Yeah, about three cases, three or four cases. I don't I'm think bringing. you need to bring 48 bottles. I like it. <laughs> okay. It's gonna be crazy. Are you just trying to get rid of all your beer? Kind of, well, I'll, no, that's uh, why I keep a cellar. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I will bring no bottles. Uh, that's what that you do every year. That, that's what you do every year. That, mm-hmm. the, the one year that I've taken part so far, <laughs> I think I brought some nice stuff. So, well, then keep so, keep that tradition alive. Whatever. Don't start a new one where you're a mooch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, all right. I'll just claim some of yours as my own. All right, that works. So anyway, uh, yeah, we will be doing that. So that's this Saturday um, at 6 p.m. Beach with a barbecue in Long Beach. Be there. And uh, as always, until next time, stay safe and drink beers. Peace.
Cheers. Pour on that one. Yeah, you know, because. 